Okay, the LCD TV I just got done repairing is a... Well, I don't know how to say that there, but <laughs> that's what it is. And there's the model number for it there. And here's some numbers I happen to pick up off the uh, power supply. Well, this TV came in here dead, as they generally do. And one of the first things I noticed was that I had a shorted fuse right next to the AC input line on my power supply. And anytime I see a shorted fuse, that's generally an indication that I'm probably going to find a shorted switching transistor. And so I uh, quickly checked this transistor right here, didn't see any problems. And I was going to check the rest, and I thought, you know, just for the fun of it, I'm going to take a slightly different approach here today. Something I like to do from time to time. And I tried clipping a couple leads onto my main reservoir capacitor here and ho hooking them up to my uh, ohm meter. And I noticed that I, I, I measured a short across this main reservoir capacitor. Now, the capacitor itself wasn't shorted, but because there were some semiconductors in a parallel path to the capacitor that were shorted, uh, it made the capacitor appear to be shorted. So, just for the fun of it, I took an external power source and I, uh, I momentarily hooked it up to my uh, capacitor input here. Observing the polarity, of course, I had to put the negative to the negative side of the power source and the positive to the positive. And I think I used about 12 volts and this capacitor can handle far more than 12 volts, so can the circuit. So I, I knew that'd probably be safe, and I, I don't think I apply it, but maybe more than two or three amps momentarily. And my thought was, I'll use the old heat tracing technique where you, you know, kind of scan around the board, try to find out if part of it's warmer than something else. And before I even got to that point, I could see that there was a jumper right next to these MOSFETs that was getting excessively hot. And, uh, so I figured, well, let me pull these MOSFETs out or check them in circuit first. Sure enough, they checked shorted, pulled them out, double checked them. Definitely they were shorted and uh, went ahead and replaced them. And I'm happy to say that actually fixed the TV. Um, you never know what to expect when you've got shorted MOSFETs. Cause like here's, here's a leftovers from another repair, for example, a couple MOSFETs go bad. And sometimes it takes out a whole slew of other components. Sometimes these little surface mounted components go bad. In this case, I had to replace, not on this TV, on a previous one, a driver IC and it looks like two or three transistors and a couple diodes there. So I got away with it this time, two MOSFETs and I'm good to go. Um, I was gonna say, if you do use this technique that I show here, uh, make sure that you know, uh, you know, you don't apply too much current. Now, in the old days, it was fairly common to jump the fuse, plug a TV in and watch what smoked. And it w often, often you could get away with that because the traces on the circuit board were real big. So if you blew a trace, it was not a big deal to put another jumper wire across it. But nowadays with all these surface mounted components, forget it. You don't want to be blowing up traces or blowing out other components that aren't bad to begin with. So, um, you know, this is something you want to try cautiously. Uh, I remember getting a job in a TV shop a long time ago and uh, I thought that was just standard technique, you know, to jump the fuse, plug it in and watch what smoked. And my boss saw me doing that. He, he looked at me and he was kind of kind of amused and he said, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm going to plug the TV in and see what smokes. He just chuckled and he says, well, we don't we don't do it that way around here. So, you know, over time, uh, I learned some better ways to troubleshoot, such as uh, checking for shorts and whatnot. By the way, on the topic shorts, um, you know, one thing that surprised me on this TV, I noticed that they didn't use any heat sink on these two um, MOSFETs right here. So I just took a piece of copper and made my own heat sink. Now, it might not have been necessary. I measured the temperature. It was operating at about 120 degrees, and that's probably not too much. But um, I thought, well, you know, may as well. Wouldn't hurt since the old ones went bad. Easy enough to do. I put a little silicone grease on there, a little piece of copper. And... Uh, there's the uh, the location number of the uh, MOSFETs, Q11 and Q12, and that was the number of the MOSFET. So if you get this same model, you might be as lucky as I was, and you'll be able to go ahead and change those two MOSFETs, and hopefully you'll be good to go. All right, hope I didn't leave anything out there. Uh, again, I do have a website. I try to put a link to every one of my videos on my website. There's the uh, address of the website, and of course, there's my business address. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful, and if you like it, please give me a thumbs up.